Welcome to Magnify Him Church, located at 4509 Island Avenue in the Double Tree Hotel Liberty Room. Our Sunday services start with intercessory prayer at 1030, life-changing church at 1045. Mm-hmm. Then our main service starts at 12 o'clock noon oh, yeah. to 1.30 p.m. That ends out our services for today. All right. May the grace of God be with you always. Amen. I'm so glad to be here with you. Amen. For the many of them that are not here this morning, amen, we realize that circumstances come up and things happen, but we have to continue and make sure that we are praying for those that are not here. Amen. It's very important. Amen. Saints, let us all stand on our feet today as you'll find me in Matthew chapter 5 going through the Beatitudes and today we have finally gotten down to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. And Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 reads, Matthew 5 verse 6, let us read together. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Amen. Glory to God. Let us hold our Bibles in the air. I can have what the Word says. I can have and I can do what the Word says. I can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, as I bow my knee before the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you, God, to please speak a word in season. I pray that you'll open up our ears that we may understand the wonders out of your law. I pray you'll teach and guide us and lead us, inspire us, God, and bless us from henceforth and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor say, Neighbor, Amen. Pastor, Pastor is about to preach. So, 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 so satisfied. satisfied. Come on, give God the glory one time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible tells us, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. When we look at the word righteousness, we realize that righteousness connected to men is doing and being what's right. We realize the same is toward God. Listen, Ben, what's right? But the Pharisees took pride in thinking that they were the total package, that they were always right because they followed the law. They followed the law. Then they were supposed to be the so-called gold standard of the earth back in their day. And we realized that they thought they were all of that before Jesus came. Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. And when Jesus came, they found out that they were far from where they thought that they were. Amen. Now, Romans chapter 3, verse 20 said, Therefore, no one will be declared declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Now, wait a minute. If he said no man is going to be declared righteous by observing the law, we got to realize something. They got a problem. They got a problem. You got to see their dilemma. Listen, Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 says that we are all as unclean things and all our righteousness are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us all away. Lord have mercy. So therefore, so since you don't Don't get it twisted about this thing about the law because I want to bring it up to 2023, what we're talking about. You're never going to be right by your actions. Now, you know, we talk about the law. We can be all over the place and people can miss the the train. But when you know that you ain't never right by your actions, that's a whole different ballsy. Because you got to realize something. A lot of people think they right by their actions. Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. And even those actions 
that we think are righteous before God. Say, do you see it's a dilemma here? Because if you can't be right by your actions, how can you be right? Listen, Romans 3 and 23 really brings this to forefront. Say, righteousness is given through faith. Somebody say, righteousness, righteousness is, given is given through faith, through faith. In, Jesus in Jesus Christ, Christ. To, you to you all who believe. Who believe. Clap yeah. your hands if you know how you got righteousness. There it is. See, righteousness comes by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. See, righteousness apart from the law and actions has been made known right here. Romans 3, verse 21 and 24 said that we are the righteousness by our faith in Jesus Christ. That's how we're made right. Saints, we have a, listen, the Bible talks about a provisional righteousness. A provisional righteousness. It means my position with God is right. My position with God is correct. My position with God is right on time. Regardless of what's going on around me, I'm right with God. Listen, because it's a provisional situation. That means because I got faith in God, I'm in the right position with God. Clap your hands if you know that this morning. Amen. I'm innocent. By the faith that I have in Christ. God has given the righteousness of Jesus Christ to every last one of you in here. You all got provisional righteousness. He said the just must live by faith. By faith because you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and his son died on the cross. So that means every last one of y'all are positionally right with God. But now practical righteousness. Practical righteousness. Somebody say practical, practical. Righteousness. righteousness. Now, practical righteousness is when you walk in integrity. When you walk in integrity. Now, listen. Me and Mother Mary have been together a long time. Our relationship is built on, number one, I always do what I say. She always do what she say. We always been down with each other from the beginning. Came all the way from North Carolina. Look, whole family coming in, right? See, because they know that when it come down to Mary, they know Pastor Love Mary. They know Pastor Love Faith. Pastor Love all of y'all, right? That's because that's the kind of relationship. And she can honestly tell you, I ain't never done them wrong. Now, when you don't do nobody wrong, you get a certain amount of respect from them. Can I, am I right? Now, if I ever messed up, you got to realize something. I done messed up that practical righteousness. That means that you can't trust me. I can't trust you now. All you got to do is blow that relationship. Ain't that right, Bridget? If I do Bridget wrong, I listen. I talk wrong to her, to her husband. Her husband going to say, Bridget, that Pastor E ain't no good. And then all of a sudden, I ain't going to be cool with Bridget no more. Am I right, y'all? So therefore, I got practical righteousness because I treat Minister Chesley right. Minister Chesley treat me right. And together, we're walking together. We got a certain connection that's right. Now, that's practical righteousness. Now, listen, I got to be right with God. Come on now. And I got to be right with what? Men and women. Amen. Now, listen, that's vertical and horizontal. That's going both ways. See? Now, what a lot of people want, they want to say they right like this here. But they ain't right with you. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, everybody don't want to treat you right. Everybody don't want to respect you. Everybody don't want to love you. But they all say they love God. How can you love God that you can't see and you can't love your brother that you can see? Something wrong here. Something is going wrong here now. You got to realize something that we got to work that thing both ways. Both ways. If you don't work in both ways, you're making me wonder if you're really who you say you are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, one thing we can't afford to have in the church is a bunch of people living a masquerade. All right? Because I got to know that you're real. Sadie, you got to know that I love you. I got to know that Sadie loved me. I got to know. Listen, we got to know that we care. Listen, how do we show that we care? Actions speak louder than words. Somebody clap your hands and say amen. Listen, if you ain't treating me right, 
I know you ain't loving me. Oh, God. Oh, help me this morning. Because anybody that love you going to take care of you. They're going to stick by you. They're going to be by your side through hell and high water. I'm going to have right actions towards you. I'm going to treat you right. Listen, you can't never go wrong with treating people right. Come on, somebody. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Now watch this. You look back at the last three Beatitudes. And you realize something that God is making you more like him each step of this way that you travel. Yes, sir. What sums up the whole Bible? Let me show you. Here it is. To love your Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Saints, that's both sides of righteousness right there. That's the vertical and the horizontal. You love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's both ways. See, that's when you're walking in righteousness. That's when you're walking in righteousness. When you can say you love your brother and you love God, you love each other, you're moving in the right direction. Somebody clap your hands and give God the glory up in here. Amen. Glory to God. See, we want to sit in church and just say we love God, love God, love God. But why you ain't loving your friends? Why you ain't concerned about your neighbors? Let me explain something to you. We all better be down like four flat ties with each other. Are you listening? When you need me, I need to be there. Huh? Come on, somebody. When I need you, you need to be there. See, then we got a working relationship. Because if I'm always there for you and you ain't never there for me, we don't have a relationship. Are you listening to the words that are coming out of my mouth? Because the word reciprocity means something. What am I getting for what I'm putting out? Oh, some of y'all, come on now. Everybody been here been robbed. Yeah. You gave people love that didn't deserve it. Come on, somebody. You spent time on people that did not deserve your time. You spent money on people that didn't deserve your money because you found out when the chips was down, they wasn't around going and say amen. And you know I'm telling the guys I ain't true. Everybody need love, but then again, don't nobody want to give it back. See, I got to feel it. I got to see it. I got to know it. Love is an action word. Listen, if you don't believe love is an action word, you look at Jesus went to the cross and died. Huh? He didn't just talk about it. He was about it. You know that he loved you because you've seen him bled, suffered, and died for you. Nobody did that for you but Jesus. Somebody clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Now, let me move on a little bit. Okay. God wants us to be right vertically and horizontally. Am I right? Yes, sir. That's what he wants. Now, let's deal with the hunger and thirst situation. Now, hunger and thirst is something that every animal, man, woman, boy on this whole earth need to eat. Am I right? Yes, sir. Now, I don't care if you're on a diet, Jenny Craig, or whatever you're doing. I don't care if you weigh 7,000 pounds. Everybody like to eat. And let me tell you, if you don't eat, you're going to die. And I want to tell you something else. Don't be tripping because everybody don't want somebody skinny. Come on, somebody. And listen, there are some people that say the more the bigger you are, the better you are. <laughs> then somebody think the littler you are, the more cuter you are. So let me tell you, somebody for everybody. Can I get a witness? Somebody clap your hand. If you're going to make changes, make changes because you want to make changes. Come on, somebody. Cause let me tell you, it don't matter if you're big, small, black, white, red, yellow, and tall. I'm here to tell you, listen, if they don't love you, it don't make no difference what size you are. Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. Because you got somebody out here on YouTube right now trying to do what they do for love. But then you do what you do for love. What if you still ain't got it after that? Come on, somebody. I got to know that, listen, what I'm putting out is reciprocity. I need to make sure I'm getting love back. Can I get a witness? Somebody clap your hands. 
I can't be in love all by myself. Come on, somebody. I need some contribution to this relationship. My brother, my sister, everybody got to eat. Now, when Jesus spoke, this wasn't at a time when you had no drive throughs When he said those that hung in third right? they didn't have no McDonald's on the corner. Okay, they didn't have no drive through They had no grocery stores. And you got to realize something back in these days when he said, when you're hungry and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. Listen, in those days, people worked all day for one meal. Oh, let me teach this morning. All day for one meal. They saved money for one meal. Today, we save money for Jordans. Come on now. We save money for gold chains. We save money. Come on now. Get your hair did. Come on now. We save money for weeds. Come on. Haircuts. Come on. We don't save money to eat. Huh? We just go to Kentucky Fried Chicken and eat. Amen. But back in these days, they work a whole day whole day pay for one meal. one meal. So when he said you hunger and thirst after righteousness, let me tell you something, saints, about being hungry. See, if you saw the end of the table, off, you'll find out how quick you get results out of people. Because some people want to be with you as long as they can eat. Now, some of y'all, you done got to the point, you done got grown, you got a little change in your pocket. Well, see, I grew up at a time I remember welfare cheese. Come on now. Huh? When I was growing up, I tried to get me a girlfriend, mama on welfare. So I can go down and eat good at the projects. Can I get a witness? They always had cereal, frosted flakes. Come on. Come on. Huh? Captain Crunch? What? <laughs> See, Angela, sometimes <laughs> y'all want me to be cute, but I'm going to be able to be real with you. Go ahead, go ahead. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead. Be all down, task of projects. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Anybody hear me? Lord, where you going, girl? <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. Because wisdom, you, you got that right. Amen. Now, we made all kind of provisions to eat. Now, some of y'all might, might have been down Big Mama house. Come on now. Y'all remember Big Mama living? Everybody eating at Big Mama house? Listen, everybody Big Mama house. Everybody. Couldn't wait to get in there. Yes, sir. And this and save your money for a pack of cigarettes. Oh. But see, I want to tell you something that God said back in these days that those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Yeah. Proverbs 16 and 26 said, the laborer's appetite works for him. See, when you get hungry enough, you'll find a job. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He said his hunger drives him on. His hunger drives him on. So back in those days, they was hungry, so they went to work. They went to work. They went to work. And at the end of the day, they could eat. So when he talks about hunger and thirsting after righteousness, are you hungry for the righteousness that comes through Christ? That's the question. I ain't talking about getting no chicken. I'm talking about being hungry for the things of God. Hallelujah. How hungry are you? If you're hungry and you're thirsting, God said, I'm going to fill you right on up. Right. Hallelujah. You don't have to leave church hungry today. You can leave with a word of God that will sustain you till the next time we meet. Somebody clap your hands and give God the glory. I don't come to church to try to find no girlfriend. You don't come to church to try to show your new outfit. You come to church to get the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I was showing the men's ministry today. I listen when God called Peter, James, and John, when he called them, the Bible said he was down on the lake of Genesaret, and they were fishermen. And the Bible said they gathered around for one reason, Mother Lumpson, to hear the word. The word is what makes a difference in our lives. Clap your hands if the word has made a difference in your life today. We never save money to eat. We save money for nikes and rims and bling. And, but he said that you are blessed when you want the right things from God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Listen, you can have the whole world, but give me Jesus. That's who I'm talking about. The ones that want Jesus. Hallelujah. Peter J. said, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have I give unto you. Give me Jesus. Pastor, I don't come to church to see if there's any cute boys in church. I come to church because I want the word. Somebody say hallelujah. Yes, indeed. You're blessed when you want something from God. As Christians, we need to be longing for that. Longing for that word. Let me tell you something. Everybody in here got up this morning, made up your mind that you're going to see Jesus. You're going to get the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Somebody clap your hands if you're getting the word today. That's important to me. That's important to me. Once upon a time, I didn't care nothing about the word. Come on now. But my Bible said, how can they hear unless there's a preacher? How can they preach unless he be sent? And God sent you a preacher so you could hear the word of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why I'm here. Hallelujah. I know what I'm here to do. I'm on a mission from God. It doesn't matter where you are in life right now because God has the power to change it all with one word. Somebody say one word. One Just word. one word. Just one word to change everything in your life. Somebody clap your hands if you know that God can do it with a word. Hallelujah. You might need money. You might need help. You might need finances. But I'm here to tell you that the word of God can give you everything you need right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word will make a difference in your life. When you're hungry and thirsty for him. So bad I can taste it. Good God of mine. Huh? Church don't start. 10.30 in the morning. I'm sitting up at 6 o'clock, ready to go to church. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the people that put your clothes out last night. Yes, sir. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Where, where my people at? No, you're going to church. Polish your shoes last night. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I your clothes last night. Because yes. I want Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I want Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And I know how to get there. Amen. Yes, sir. Gas up your car the day before. Yes, Hallelujah. Because right. I don't want to be late. Because if he come this morning and he come to church, I'm going on with him. Somebody clap your hands. Hallelujah. I want you to get the point. The only reason you don't have the righteousness is because you're not hungry. Listen, you're not hungry enough to come and get it. I want you to realize something that every Sunday this table is spread. Yes, it is. Always available. You can get the word eight times a week. I don't even know a church you get the word eight times. I don't even know. But I'm here to tell you something that magnifies. You get the word eight times a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Tuesday night, and two services on Sunday. Ain't no way in the world you ain't got the word. Amen, amen. You want to know how you're going to grow? Stay in the word. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. Tell somebody, stay in the word. Hallelujah. And when you stay in the word, you're going to be so, so, so satisfied. Lord have mercy. Is anybody here satisfied today? Woo. Do you know what the word fill mean? That means saturated. 
like a sponge, squeeze and then open it up and put it in water. Sponge, we try to soak it all up. I be trying to get all the word I can get. Hallelujah. Somebody say, why are you trying to get all the word? Because when I leave church, I got hell to face. Can I get a witness? Somebody say, man, I don't know about you, but I need all the word I can get. Because Monday morning, the devil going to be sitting right there waiting to give me a hard time. And if I ain't got a word, listen, I don't know what in the world I'm going to do. I lose my mind if I didn't have a word on Sunday. Can I get a witness? I need the word. Hallelujah. Every day of my life life you got no idea the weight that I got to deal with the mess that's waiting for me at home the garbage that I just can't seem to take out it's always there what I'm gonna tell you something everything go better with the word hallelujah now I need a word I need a word I ain't trying to piggyback on nobody else I don't want you to tell me what happened at church. I don't need you to email me. Listen, I need some knee mail. Can I get a witness? Because the hell I'm going through, I got to hear it straight for myself. Anybody know? I got to get it. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil is alive. I got to get mine on. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. I'm going to get it. In fact, I'm going to get it for the rest of my life. I ain't going to let nothing stop me from getting the word on heavens. Yeah. I believe I got a witness up in here. Uh, somebody trying to be right with God by being such a good person. Are oh, you just a goody goody? Yeah. Where my goody goody? You just a goody goody. Everything you do, you just goody, 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 goo goo. Yeah. But then there ain't nobody watching. The other day I was on the phone with somebody. And they were such a goody, goody. And they dropped something. And they thought I hung up. And I heard them throw a few cuss words out there. They said, that blankety, blank, blank, blank. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah. Where that blanking phone at? <laughs> I said, wait a minute. Hold up, mother. What in the world is going on here? And I kept my mouth shut, Faye. Let me tell you what I did, baby girl. I just politely hung the phone up. I said, yeah, because cause you didn't have to realize something. If you hang with a lame, you develop a limp. Can I get a witness? And, and you got to realize something. When you start hanging around people that ain't right, it'll make you start messing up. So I didn't want to hear too many cuss words. Can I get a witness? Because the next thing you know, I'll be them blah. Oh, wait a minute now. Hold up. Come on now. Because that cussing is a spirit. And I heard her lay it down. She can cuss too, boy. She said, where that blanket and blank daggone blank and phone at? <laughs> <laughs> Lord help me Jesus help me Lord I just hang the phone up say oops <laughs> I'll talk to you later you gotta put all your faith in God come on y'all if you trust in man it'll bring a snare put your trust in God you're gonna be safe amen glory to God I still pray for but I tell you it was something else on that phone amen and I didn't let her know I heard it. Because I don't want to discuss it. Because you know some people that ain't there yet. If you get into it too deep, you won't hear from them no more. They don't want to come back to the church. But let me tell you something. Every last one of y'all is a work in progress. Somebody say amen. Ain't none of us there yet. You better come on and give God the glory. God is still working on me. I feel like preaching today. I'm telling you, God got us all on the potter's wheel. Hallelujah. You don't have to fool me trying to be a goody goody. Just be good with God. That's all I ask you to do. You ain't got to put on a show. Be good with God. Because if you're good with God, don't worry about nobody else. Somebody. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm almost done. Yeah, I'm almost out of this. Amen, amen. By putting all your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. 
to die for your sins. Can I get a witness? See, God looks at you who by faith believe in what Jesus did on the cross and accept him as your savior. See, God sees righteousness because he sees Jesus in you. Clap your hands if you hear me. But you see, you see you and you're not impressed. You assume how God feels about you. But can I tell you something? Your standing with God has nothing to do with your actions. But everything to do with your faith in Jesus. And you know when the old folk used to sing a song, I woke up early this morning I didn't have no doubt. I woke up early this morning and I didn't have no doubt. See? I woke up early this morning and I didn't have no doubt. I know the Lord will provide for me. I know the Lord he'll take care of me. I know the Lord he will guide me all the way, all the way. I felt like running, felt like running. I felt like running, felt like running. I felt like shouting, felt like shouting. I felt like shouting, felt like shouting. I felt like dancing, felt like dancing, felt like dancing, felt like dancing. Felt like a dancing, felt like dancing, felt like a dancing, felt like dancing. Hallelujah! I want you to realize something. That's the mindset you need to have in your life, in your mind, and in your spirit. When you wake up in the morning, listen to me, Nia. You can't have no doubts. Amen. You got to know that the Lord will provide for you. That the Lord will guide you. And he'll be by your side. All the way. And when you feel like that. You're going to realize something. You're going to be so satisfied. Is anybody in here satisfied with Jesus? Get on your feet and give God the glory. As we about to get out of here today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I got a question to ask everybody in here today. Did you get a word from the Lord? Yes, sir, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got another question to ask you. Do you love the Lord? Yes. Amen. I want to ask you one more, Lana. Do you love the word? Yes. Hallelujah. Do you love your neighbor as yourself? Yes. Well, you got the message to get. Go care to the world. Hallelujah. If there's anybody.